Good afternoon, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'm sitting in my front yard food forest in Portland, Oregon, underneath my goji berries, which are just getting ready to flower. And I thought that I would make a garden update video for you all this week. So I did a video last week and I didn't show every part of my garden, but I showed quite a few parts of it. And in June, so much is happening and there is so much rapid change in the garden that making a garden video once a month really isn't sufficient to give you a picture of what is happening here. So if you're new to my channel, I have a quarter acre permaculture food forest garden that I planted 13 years ago. And it's been a slow change. I really believe in the permaculture principle of slow, small solutions. I had my third and my fourth kids while I was working on building this garden. I broke both of my legs. I have been really busy working and caring for or elderly parents and uh, trying to homeschool my kids. So the change has been slow and that's been really good. So when you watch these weekly garden updates, if you feel like, holy cow, Angela, like there's just incredible abundance and so much packed into this space, I couldn't possibly take the time to do all of this. Please be aware that it has been 13 years in the making. And even now I'm constantly tweaking and adding and better supporting my garden here as time goes on. So don't be discouraged if you look at my June videos and you see just a absolute abundance of green growing things and fruit setting and flowers in bloom. It wasn't always that way here and it is a slow process. And what matters is the journey that you're walking and the progression. I enjoy my garden just as much today as I did 12 years ago when I was first starting out and there wasn't much here except cardboard and compost and wood chips. So let's take you around a little bit of my garden, some little corners of it every week throughout June and July and show you what is happening because the changes are so quick and so numerous as plants mature, as flowers are set into fruit, as things cycle in and out that I really want to do a more frequent update so that you all feel like you get a good picture of what's happening in my garden. I won't be able to cover every bit of my garden in every video every week, but I'm just gonna to touch on some highlights. And that way, hopefully, you will get a better idea of what it's like to live a life intertwined with a suburban or urban permaculture garden. So let me show you around. So let's start off under the goji berries here. You can see they are just beginning to flower. Goji flowers are delicate purple, obviously a member of the nightshade family you can tell by the shape of them they will be numerous here shortly way up high i have loads and loads of buds set and they will be blooming very quickly all of the gojis will hopefully be up high here because they're in, contained in an arbor this year in a trellis and that way it keeps them from flopping onto the ground and tip rooting you can check out my video where i built this trellis with my partner earlier in the spring, hoping to keep these gojis a little bit more contained, neater, and this area of my garden more effective. So you won't believe it if you saw my video last week or some of my earlier videos about my pawpaws, but look how big the fruit is getting. Wow. Each individual flower can set five to six fruit. Now some of them have just set a couple, but this one here, six fruit off of one flower. So I'm really excited about the progress of my pawpaws here. They're doing a great job holding on to their fruit. Next to them, the aronia berries are getting very heavy. I think I may build a trellis arbor here as well to help support my aronia because the older they get and the more heavily they set fruit, the more they really bend into the path and become kind of an issue where it's hard to get through. As we do kind of push aside the berries, one of my favorite native flowers back here is in bloom. Whoa, this is Philadelphus Lewisii, Lewis's mock orange. The smell is just enticing. Philadelphus Lewisii is one of my favorite native flowers. Fragrance, unlike anything else, great 
aromatic plant for your garden, great insectary plant, really brings in the beneficials. Little tiny parasitoid wasps and sweat bees and bees and beneficial beetles all really like this plant. So behind the mock orange, to contrast with this beautiful white and yellow stamens, is Clematis jackmanii. Now, this was one of the few plants that was here when we bought the house, and I have just let it do its thing. It was actually originally growing on the house, and I have put it on an arbor. You can see my Lady Banks Rosa Banksii, Lady Banks Rose, finished blooming early in the year. And to provide interest on the trellis, later in the season, this Clematis fills in. She's a stunner. Behind it I have hops. These are nugget hops. If you brew English ales, this is a good hop. Now, I kind of let it go crazy. It goes on the ground and rambles wherever it likes. I try and keep it up on the trellis. It will produce loads and loads more hops, flowers than I can actually utilize for brewing, but that's okay because it has a lot of other medicinal benefits. Now looking back into the shade garden here, a lot of things that are early bloomers have finished. If you look down here, this is a hardy cranesbill that is a shade loving cranesbill geranium. It's finished, I need to cut it to the ground and it will bloom again. The same thing here, so my philictrum, really a great plant, looks delicate, but very tough and hardy. I'm actually not gonna cut it back because I want to save the seeds from it. So I'm gonna let these seeds mature and then I will cut it back hard. So here you can see the Angelica Archangelica is also setting seed. These big seed heads will produce tons and tons and tons of seed that I will broadcast and they will come up next year. It is a short-lived perennial, maybe a biennial where you are. Now I have noticed they do get black aphids, but that's okay. This plant is tired and it does not in any way impact the setting of the seeds. So I just go ahead and let the aphids do their thing. Also finishing flowering in this part of the garden are my elderberries and I am going to have an unbelievable set of elderberries this year. It's amazing to me how when you prune your elders it really reinvigorates them. All of this is just gonna be so much fruit. Can't wait for September and to make elderberry syrup. About the same time that the elderberries are done flowering, the thimbleberries are also finishing up. These delicate, velvety, native red berries make a tasty snack when you are strolling through the garden. They are very soft and it's difficult to pick a pint of them without them all turning into mush, but it is tasty, tasty mush. I will say it's difficult to walk through this part of the garden and not get covered in spiders, but that's just how it is. So back through the thimbleberries, which are just such a great choice for a shady location. The leaves are just really, really lovely. It doesn't need staking like other raspberries. Back here in the corner is my black cap raspberry, which always sets heavily right along the fence with my neighbor. I cannot wait to be harvesting these. Absolutely one of the best home fruits you can grow, not readily available in the store. It is house finch season. Now the June berries are beginning to ripen over here. Let me come show you those. Interspersed with calendula. The calendula self sows and comes up whatever color it wants to. It gets to express all its genetic diversity in my garden. So here are the June berries. Well, I have them everywhere, but this is just one of them. This one is ripe. 
Juneberry, also known as serviceberry, also known as Saskatoon, is a native in North America. The fruit tastes like a mix of cherries and almonds and blueberries. Here you can see one of my other service berries. These are from Rain Tree Nursery. They are improved varieties bred for superior fruit production. So if you grow service berries, just be aware they are prone to cedar apple rust, so don't grow them near quince or apple trees. This year I have had none on these plants, which is amazing. Underneath my Carolina allspice is just thinking about blooming. Really excited. I can't wait till these get bigger. A very fragrant insectary plant. Thornless triple crown blackberries in flower and starting to set fruit. Underneath you can see this comfrey, which I will be cutting back this week. It's almost done blooming. Still too many bees visiting it for me to justify cutting it back yet. But in a few days I will. So in the front yard under my grape arbor, you can see that my Canada's grapes have set really well this year. One of my favorite table grapes. Grapes are wind pollinated. Loads and loads and loads of them. And underneath, the artichokes have begun to bud. Probably only get about a half dozen artichokes off this one plant every year. That's okay, that's enough. So one thing that is not going well, and I'm trying to just hold back and follow the permaculture principle, observe and interact, is that this plum, which is an early Laxton and one of my favorite plums, is really getting hammered by aphids right now. And I'm very tempted to spray with soapy water, but I have noticed in the last few days the ladybugs are starting to move in. So if we remove the source of food for ladybugs, we're not gonna get ladybugs. So this is a feast for them, a smorgasbord, and I kinda wanna see how they do. Now this tree has already been weakened by bacterial gummosis, and I'm trying to keep it going. You can see I've had to remove a big section of it that was infected, but it sets such delicious fruit. I really wanna keep it going. So we'll see, look in here, look. We'll see if these ladybugs can take care of business in the next few days. Backing up here, we can see my honeyberries have set and I will be picking these this afternoon. Also known as hascaps, the, these are a honeysuckle that sets a tasty blue fruit. It's a little tart for fresh eating, but very good for preserving. So up here in the front yard, this bed has changed many times over the years. It started out originally, well, as just grass, but then for a number of years I grew pumpkins and dahlias and this plum tree was just a tiny little stick. what I'm working on is building a front bed that can be an ambassador for permaculture. I talk a lot about how beauty and permaculture are not mutually exclusive, how actually if we focus on adding beautiful things to our garden and aesthetic design as well as functional design that we can have better permaculture. So I'm still filling in some gaps here. This Hebe will get large and fill in this area. These Rudbeckia will bloom later. So this bed is still in process. I have trouble getting things to grow under this plum tree. It's quite shaded and quite dry.
One of my favorite things about this front bed is how the house is hidden in the back. How it feels like a secret hideaway tucked into a forest, tucked into a woodland garden. Except that every layer you go back through, there are more and more food producing plants, as well as beautiful things to look at. What a difference a few days makes. We are starting to get ripe raspberries. Falconblau in full bloom now. One of my favorite rambling roses, nearly thornless. Today, let me take y'all down into this back corner of the orchard. We're currently ripping up pallets to make a catty corner covered area for our garbage cans. That's been the project the last three days, using free resources, repurposing them whenever we can. So down on the chicken coop, my Concord grapes have set nicely as well. Love Concord grapes, they remind me of my grandfather's garden in Indiana. John Cena's gonna come hang out with us, my favorite chicken. So back in this corner is a plant that I wish I had grown elsewhere in my garden, and that is my early Fuyu persimmon. You can see here it is just about finished flowering. The tiny little blossoms are turning brown and falling off. And I'll show you inside here. The tiny little baby fruit has set. It's going to be a great year for persimmons. Behind them you can see my gumi berry really cranking out the fruit right now. They make great chicken treats. And lastly today, I wanted to show you my Illinois Everbearing Mulberry, which is kind of a pain. It gets really huge, but it produces so much fruit. This is a plant that will stain concrete and your clothes and your hands. So if you grow it, it's best to grow it somewhere like a poultry run where the ducks and chickens will clean up any of the fruit that falls. If I had it to do again, I would probably pick a more dwarf variety. This takes yearly heavy pruning to keep contained. So thanks for watching today. If you got something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please check out my Patreon in the description and please consider subscribing. All of those are ways that you can help support me in making more permaculture videos and sharing more of my 20 plus years experience in permaculture. Thanks.